This is, of course, Joie de Livre, which is a wonderful pun on Joie de Vivre, which in French means a, a joy of life. But really, Joie de Vivre is a philosophy. It's an approach where you're always mining the joy in whatever's before you, and that's what we're going to do here. So they punned, and they said Joie de Livre, which is a book, though in French it should be Joie du Livre. <laughs> and today, we are going to be looking at Joie with an S, des Livres with an S. So we're going to be looking at the manifold joys that an individual book brings and that three books together bring. That's what we're up to. And we have so little time, we're just gonna throw a little soupçon out, little flavors and tastes, and hopefully you'll run off and feast on these three books. I can't recommend them enough. So let me quickly say who's here. Uh, I'll start with you, Christopher, because you're closest. Christopher Gortner is C.W. Gortner. The Queen's Vow is his book, and The Queen's Vow takes us into the world of 15th century Spain to retell the story of the famous slash infamous Isabella of Castile from her point of view, so from the inside out, so that we can begin to at least understand and get inside of a woman who was both uh, great and brought some iniquity to the world. It's so interesting. Christopher recently spoke at the Commonwealth Club and here's what he had to say there. He said, I've always been fascinated by famous women with controversial reputations. Well, that would be Elizabeth. Isn't that great? Let's give Christopher a hand. <laughs> and to his right is Anita Amirazvani. And her book is Equal of the Sun. Now, Equal of the Sun takes us into the world of 16th century Iran. And it tells the story of an historical princess, Pari Khan <coughs> Kanum Safavi, who in 1576, after her father the Shah dies, she has to struggle to lead Iran as its unofficial female ruler. And let me read you something interesting that Anita has said. And again, I love this. I'm a writer, so I love this. For most of us, it's a very long road. You have to work hard and give your whole heart and soul to it. And just when you think you've given everything you can, you have to work even harder and give all of yourself all over again. If you do this, you can call yourself a writer, whether you get published or not. <laughs> Anita, Anita. <laughs> and then to her right is Amanda Copeland. Amanda's novel is The Orchardist. And it takes us into the back country of the Pacific Northwest in the late 19th century and early 20th century. And the action in her book turns around a fictional character, William Talmadge. He makes a living tending and selling the fruits from his orchards. And his life changes because there are incursions. Characters come in who are both troubling and troubled. And history invades, the railroads come, the agricultural industry changes, and because of that, his life changes. And of course, our lives have changed as well. Here's something she said about her book. I am so interested in people's relationship to their landscape. During the time I wrote about, your livelihood depended on your relationship to landscape. Amanda Copeland. They don't know this, but I'm going to start with one of the great joys of Livre. And let me tell you, this is not always the case, but in these three books, one of the great joys is that first sentence. So I'm going to read their first sentences. They are so good. Let me start with one. I'm just simply going to read it. No one believed I was destined for greatness. First person. That's the Queen's vow. That's Christopher's Isabella. That's how she begins. Aren't you in already? No one believed, right? Okay. Here is the second. I swear to you on the Holy Quran, there has never been another woman like Pari Khan Kanum. So we have a first person, but it's not Pari. And there's never been another woman? Yeah. I want to know about this, right? That's Amida. <laughs> His face was as pitted 
as the moon. <laughs> Different, right? We're in third person. This is Amanda. This is how her book begins. And I will tell you, because I've read all three books, the whole book is in the first sentence. It tells you so. Whatever that just felt like to you, you're right. I want to thank these three fabulous, fabulous authors. And you are all ready to turn this over to Amanda Joy, and she will wrap us up. Thank you, Amanda, for being an incredible. Uh, <laughs> I feel like I've just been to class and learned so much from you and from all of you. And what's interesting, I think, is the commonalities that get developed, even though our topics are fairly different, uh, different centuries, different countries, and uh, really yours is more getting towards the modern period, right? So I think, uh, I think this format is really good. Well, this is kind of one of our premier events. Uh, it's one of the most important events that we give all year in conjunction with the National Women's National Book Association. And so we're really excited that our authors were pretty local. We had two from the local area and one from Oregon, which is pretty close. And uh, the books are selected by the publishers uh, for this event, and um, they were I mean, we were just so excited this year. There were wonderful books, and I read all of them, and so I can say that I was very, very drawn in by the subject matter, and I thought Amanda McTighe today did just such an incredible job with her interview and with all of her questions and with all the things that she wanted the authors to focus on. It just really seemed to get at right at the heart of why the authors wanted to write historical fiction and the process they went through creating character, research, creating place, and, and their commitment to bringing that alive to us. So one of the uh, Lit Quake organizers was here and she said, this is so good, this is great because it's what readers want to hear. And so I think, you know, our event really achieved its purpose.